Hey guys, it's Carthrone. In this video, I'm going to be going over how I ship my TCG orders. This primarily applies to Pokemon and Magic cards on TCG Player and eBay, but can also expand to pretty much any kind of cards you want to ship on any platform if you just modify it a bit. So anyway, starting out, we just have a basic plain white envelope. These are from Walmart. They're not the highest quality ones, but everyone has access to these, so I'm going to show it for that purpose. I have switched over to a slightly more premium one just because they have a better seal, but these ones will still work for you if that's all you have access to. So for one to three cards, we will just use a penny sleeve. Just put all the cards inside the penny sleeve. Throw them in a top loader. And do not tape the top loader. I see a lot of people do that, but the cards can actually slide and touch the tape and it can damage them. So you want to pay just a few cents each for these team bags. Also, if you're shipping a lot of cards, I recommend buying everything in bulk because you're going to get a lot lower prices and cut your costs drastically. So yeah, for one to three cards, we just put it in a top loader. I put it in the envelope by itself and then... I take a piece of tape. I like to use the Scotch Super Hold because I find regular Scotch tape um, often is just going to come loose. So we just take one little piece of tape and I just tape the team bag inside the envelope. It does kind of make it more tricky for the buyer to remove the cards, but I haven't had any complaints about it so far. If you want to, you can also wrap it in a sheet of paper and tape it to the paper, but you have to remember that's going to add weight and additional costs. So yeah, for one to three cards, that is what I do. And this only needs a single 63 cent stamp currently. And I'll just take a thermal label and a self-inking address stamp, put this in the top left. You can find these pretty cheap on Amazon. So yeah, we just put the label put the stamp and then seal it up and ship it out. So that's one of three cards. And now for four to eight cards, I like to sh shift over to the shipping shields. These are about the same price as a top loader. If you don't have these, you can also just use the method that I'll show after this. But for eight cards, I would just take all eight cards, put them in a penny sleeve, Put them in the shipping shield. I do not recommend putting more than eight cards in one of these because it will stretch it out too much and then if the machine clamps down on this it can actually bend the edges of the cards a bit and add creases. So I found the eight is a pretty good number where they're not going to get damaged too frequently. I haven't had many complaints with only putting eight cards in here. So I'll just put the shipping shield inside of the team bag for some additional water protection. And then we'll just put this in the envelope. You wanna make sure it's in the center because the sorting machine is gonna grab the edge of the envelope. And if you have something jammed to the edge, it's not gonna be able to grab it sometimes and then it's gonna jam in the machine and your envelope will end up ripped in half or something. I've had that happen to me before. So to avoid that, I haven't had any issues just putting the cards in the center of the envelope and then we'll just take a piece of tape and just tape it to the envelope like that you only need one piece it's not going to shift around at all you can shake this a lot and it's going to stay in place so we'll just seal that up and for four to eight cards in the shipping shield you only need one 63 cent stamp forever stamp now for 9 to 13 cards, I go back to using a top loader, and I'll show you how I do this. So 9 cards here. We'll put 3 of them inside of a penny sleeve. They can be the most valuable cards if you want, but I would usually just put the first 3 in the order inside the top loader. And then the additional cards I'll put in a penny sleeve. And then we'll take both of these and put it inside the team bag. This will add a little bit of rigidity to the stack of cards. But obviously all the cards are not inside the top loader, so it's not the perfect 
protection, but generally if people are just ordering cheaper cards, this is sufficient. I haven't had any complaints. So you just take that and then tape it to the center of the envelope. Seal it up and up to 13 cards. If you have the thinner envelopes from Walmart, you can ship it with a single 63 cent forever stamp. But if you have sort of more premium envelopes, your weight might go up to like 1.3 ounces or so, so it might get pulled. It's not an exact science on the weights, but you kind of want to be under just just to be sure they're not going to slap additional postage and send it back to you. But that will still happen sometimes, even when you're in the weight parameters that they require. But yeah, if, if you're going to use a bit higher quality envelopes than these ones, I'd recommend just slapping on an additional ounce stamp up to 13 cards. But otherwise, if you're using the cheap envelopes, one forever stamp is enough. This is going to weigh about exactly one ounce. So for above 13 cards, we kind of change up our shipping method entirely. And we forego the top loaders. And what I like to do is, I like to grab some cardstock. This is a bit of a thicker sort of paper, thicker than your printer paper. It's gonna add a, a slight bit of rigidity to the envelope so it's not gonna like bend and rip or anything. But if you want to, you can also just use your packing slip. I don't use packing slips personally because ink is expensive and you're just adding extra time and money into it. And I feel like most people don't care if you include a packing slip or not. So for 14 through 50 cards, what I like to do is divide it into even stacks. I will show 20 cards first. Let me count out 20. So take 20 cards and then divide it into two. And then we'll put 10 and one team back. You wanna make sure you fold it kinda of tight this way and then push them down to one side and then tightly roll over the back and put a piece of tape just like that. And then the cards are not gonna slide around at all. So if they have hollows or anything, they're not going to get scratched because they're not going to be moving inside of these team bags. Just fold that over like that. And then push them down to one side. Fold the excess over. And you want to make it look as pretty as possible if you can. This might have not, not have been perfect. It's a little bit of crinkles, but it's fine. So then you want to put them in the center of the cardstock, right by the edge. And if you want, you can use painter's tape here, but I just stick with my extra hold tape. They're still gonna be able to remove this pretty easily. And then you'll just fold it up, like so. Make sure it's creased. And then fold it over the other way. And then you can just slide this inside of your envelope like so and then just seal it up and this weighs about 1.8 ounces so we will use one 63 cent stamp and one additional ounce stamp the old ones are the rabbits now they're making school buses so just add one of those and that will pay for up to two ounces. If you're between one to two ounces, you need to pay for the full two ounces, so you need additional ounce stamp. I definitely recommend getting additional ounce stamps. You're gonna save a lot of money. I know some people just slap two of these on, but we don't wanna overpay for postage. Now I'm going to show how I ship up to 51 cards in a PWE. You guys might think this is not possible, but I've done it many times now and haven't had any problems with shipping these out. Haven't had any returns of 51 card orders. So you split it into three stacks of 17. I would not recommend going over this because then your envelope is gonna be too thick. I like to max out at 51. So you put 17 in one team bag, seal it up. Try to make it as tight as you can. It's not gonna be perfect. 
for this video is I don't have the time to make it look super pretty, but yeah, we're just gonna push them down to one side like we did before, fold it over, and put a piece of tape on it. Just gonna do that three times. We'll take our three stacks of 17, center them on the piece of cardstock, and then just tape each one down. Like so. Before I learned this method, I used to just go up to shipping first class tract, which is gonna cost about four bucks. If you're shipping bulk cards, and you're paying four bucks like that, that's usually gonna eat up the entire cost of the order, so you're gonna end up losing money. So this is a way you can still make a little bit of margin if you're just selling all five cent singles. Just gonna fold that up. Put it in the envelope. We don't need to tape it to the envelope or anything. And then just seal it. And for 51 cards, you have to use a 63 cent stamp and you'll need three additional ounce stamps. So put those three on there and uh, one regular stamp. This actually weighs around 3.8 ounces, so technically it's over the 3.5 ounce limit for letter mail, but like I said, they don't weigh it, they're just going by feel and it's close enough to 3.5 ounces that you'll be able to ship it out with no problem. Just make sure you're always putting them in the collection box instead of handing it to someone at the desk because a lot of times you're going to have problems that way whereas if you just throw it in the box they're not going to say anything. So yeah, that's it. For any in-between amounts I would recommend just weighing out your envelope. Each additional ounce you need one of these stamps. And yeah, that's about it for PWE. If I'm over 51 cards, I shift to using bubble mailers and boxes. I'll show you a different couple of types of bubble mailers I use. So I have these smaller ones. I kind of like the, I prefer the paper ones over these like blue plastic ones because these ones actually are kind of see-through. But yeah, just use any bubble mailer you can find. These are about four by seven dimensions and then these are the ones you can get from eBay. I use these for graded cards as well as large quantity of singles and I usually just put the cards in there and then fold it over once and then seal it so it ends up looking like that. And yeah, I might make another video on different types of items to ship out, but let me know what you guys would like to see. I've kind of mastered shipping out cards on TCG Player and eBay at this point. I have very few returns orders at this point, less than 1%, I'd say less than a half percent even. I've only had like one or two go wrong in the past couple weeks. That's why shipping out like 40 to 50 orders per day. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching. Smash the like button, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.